In the early 1990s, the Northwest Atlantic cod seemingly disappeared overnight. How did this happen, and why didn't we see it coming? Fish are difficult to see. Although we've gotten better and better at catching them, it is still hard if not impossible to count them. And if we can't count, we can't know the size of a population. So fishery scientists rely on different metrics. The most common is to look at catch per unit effort. If a fishing boat spends 8 hours trawling and catches 8 tonnes of fish, then you can say that the population is 1 tonne per hour of trawling. We can interpret a fall in this catch per unit effort as a decline in the population, and a rise can be seen as growth. This basic concept can be very powerful, and is called proportionality. Catch per unit effort changes proportionally with abundance of fish. Unfortunately, most fish are more complex than this, and this makes it difficult to interpret catch per unit effort. It's easy to think of fish as simple life forms. After all, very few of us watch them in the same way as we watch our pet cats, dogs, or goats. But the more scientists observe fish in their natural habitats, the more strange and varied they appear. Most fishing boats use nets. The first time a fishing boat arrives to a site, the fish will have never seen a net before. They are naive. The fish that do not avoid the net are caught, whilst the fish that are scared of the net escape. So either through natural selection or learned behaviour, the fewer fish that remain are harder to catch. This is called hyperdepletion. The catch per unit effort decreases faster than abundance. However, we can also see the opposite effect in many species, and this is where things are more dangerous for the fish. When many fish breed, they like to aggregate in a few small areas. These areas could be good habitat for eggs, or just a spot that is convenient for a large number of fish to come together and find each other. Often these aggregations are very predictable, for example occurring in the same place and on the same full moon every year. So fishermen can time their run with the aggregation and have a huge haul. These huge hauls deplete the population, but because the fishermen are continuing to catch their maximum allotment, the catch does not decrease. Year after year the population declines whilst the fishermen's catch stays about the same. It gives the impression of an infinitely large fishery, there's plenty more fish in the sea until finally the last of the population is caught and the fishery collapses. This is called hyperstability. The catch remains stable despite a loss of stock until an eventual collapse. This is what happened with the Atlantic cod. The cod aggregates in late winter and early spring to breed, making them susceptible to hyperstability. The cod stocks looked relatively healthy, even peaking around 1970 before a small crash in the 70s and a complete fishery collapse in 1992. A large proportion of fish species are estimated to exhibit some degree of hyperstability or hyperdepletion. Even though we have developed better tools to count fish, most of the world's fisheries still rely on catch per unit effort to manage their numbers, a practice that will likely see more fisheries collapse before we have the chance to even notice.